Hello, this video will be answering a question you've probably taken for granted for so long, you didn't even realise it was a question that needed answering. Before we get onto that though, do something for me please. Close your eyes and touch your nose with one of your fingers, any finger will do. Now, unless you're very drunk, more about that later, or have one of a certain number of illnesses, I'm guessing you find that incredibly easy. But why? Your eyes were closed. How does your brain know where your hand is, or your nose for that matter? Just think about it. Even without looking, you know where your foot is, don't you? But how? Let's find out, shall we? In this video, we'll also be answering the question, why teenagers are clumsy? But you'll have to wait to the end for that one. We'll also have a look at some tricks you can try yourself. Before we start, I'd really quickly like to go over some of the terminology I'll be using, and to do that, let's consider the hinge joint at the elbow. Flexion requires a contraction of the bicep muscle here, and a reduction in the angle at the joint here. Extension is the opposite, and requires the contraction of the tricep muscle, and an increase in this, of this angle here. It also results in the elongation of the bicep muscle. See, I said I'd be quick. So how many senses do you have? If you said five, then I'm afraid you were wrong, but thank you for playing, and you are in good company. Aristotle refused to believe there were more than five senses. What you're thinking of are the senses that allow us to experience the world outside our bodies. But there are senses that allow our brain to make sense of our internal world. The one we'll be talking about today is called proprioception. Scientists still argue about whether this is actually a sense or not, because, you know, there aren't enough things to argue about as it is. But proprioception allows your brain to know where your various body parts are. But how does it work? Inside your muscles are receptors known as muscle spindles. There are two types of these receptors. One type measures the length and how fast your muscles move, and the other type just measures the length of the muscle. These contain long proteins spiralling around the muscle fibres. As we extend a joint, the muscle fibres get longer and the distance between the coils increases and this information is relayed to the brain. There are similar receptors in your tendons. These attach muscle to bone, and these detect how much force is being exerted on your muscles, and thus give you a sense of how heavy something is. It allows you to exert the right level of force to move or lift objects, and also how strongly we need to grip them in order to lift them. Interestingly, following heavy exercise, we often get the sensation that our limbs feel heavy. This is due to muscle weakness caused by the exercise. Our muscles now have to contract more strongly to move our limbs, and this extra effort is perceived as added weight to the limbs. There are also receptors in the joints that detect the angle of each of the joints. And finally, receptors in the skin measure the amount of stretch. All these receptors gather information that allows your brain to make sense of your body position. But how does it work? These receptors gather information about the muscles, joint and skin, and send the information via sensory neurons to the brain via the spinal cord. Here, the information is processed by two separate parts of the brain. The cerebellum at the back of the brain sorts out our unconscious understanding of our bodies. A part of the cerebral cortex, that's the thinky part of the brain, processes our conscious perception of body location. This information gives us a sense consciously and unconsciously of where our various body parts are. But this information on its own is meaningless as it just boils down to a series of length and angle measurements. To help our brains put this information into perspective, our brains also have a body map that it uses to assign the lengths and angles to. The image of the body that the cerebellum has isn't perfect, and so visual cues also help to refine this portrayal. Proprioception is not to be confused with, ki with kinesthesia, which is the sense of body movements. Proprioception is concerned solely with body position, but it also gives us a sense of force, exertion and weight. So then, can proprioception be fooled? Even though this is such an important sense that gives us an idea of our own body ownership, it can be relatively easily bamboozled. In the experiment I asked you to perform at the beginning of the video where you close your eyes and touch your nose with your finger, if the arm that is touching your nose was vibrated, this would give a sense that the arm was extending or straightening out. 
since you're still touching your nose, there's still a sensory information about nose touching. Your brain would then perceive this as your nose growing, in a phenomenon called the Pinocchio illusion. In another experiment, a subject sits with one of their arms hidden. In view is a rubber hand. If an experimenter simultaneously strokes the hidden hand and the rubber hand, the test subject will shift their proprioception to believe that the rubber hand is now part of their body. And this is a bit strange when they then try to move the hand and nothing happens. Strangely, if subjects are asked to hide one hand under a table, say, and then point with the other hand to where they think certain parts of the hidden hand are, knuckles and fingertips, etc., the map that is described by these people is distorted and shows the hand squatter and wider than it actually is, similar to the famous body homunculus. So here's a quick proprioception trick that we can do relatively easily. Hold out your arms with the back of your hands facing each other and thumbs pointing downwards. Then cross your hands over and interlock your fingers. Finally bring your hands in and round so that your fingers are now pointing straight up. If you now get someone to point at but not touch one of your fingers, you'll find it incredibly difficult to move that finger. There are actually lots of these on the Royal Institute YouTube channel and I'll put in the link in the description. So can we train our proprioception? Just like most of your senses, proprioception can be trained to a certain degree. Athletes and other top sports stars all have proprioception in regards to their specific skills much better than you or I. The same can be said for musicians. Just imagine a competent guitarist. They don't need to look at the fretboard to be able to make the correct hand shapes for each note or chord. They've trained their brain to know what the required hand shapes need to be. Or imagine a pianist who can sight read music. If they're playing a piece they've never played before, their brain still knows all the hand shapes needed to play that new piece of music. And as they're playing one note and reading ahead, their brains are already preparing the muscles for the shape of the next note to be played. Even when we're standing still, muscles in our trunk are constantly changing their tension to keep us upright. And this becomes more noticeable if you were to stand on one foot. Yoga and Tai Chi have all been suggested as methods to pr improve proprioception. So what happens when this sense goes wrong then? As we get older, the likelihood of us falling over increases and it's believed that a reduced sense of body location is due, at least in some part, to this increase. Tiredness can also affect our proprioception. People, when they are tired, often report a feeling that their body is bigger than it actually is. And when we enter the hypnagogic state just before we drift off into sleep, our sense of proprioception can get very messed up. Sometimes when people have limbs amputated, they can feel like the limb is still there, and this is known as phantom limb syndrome. An interesting therapy for this is to use a mirror box so that it looks like the missing limb is still there. And this has been proven to be successful in treating this condition and the associated phantom pain that goes with it. People who've suffered from stroke can have their proprioception affected in quite serious and debilitating ways. Damage to one of the somatosensory areas of the brain will affect movement and body location on the opposite side of the body. And also alcohol can affect our sense of proprioception. This is why American law enforcement uses a field sobriety test as an initial marker for the drunkenness, or otherwise, of drivers. And so on to the question I promise will be answered at the beginning of the video. Why are teenagers so clumsy? Though this actually applies to all children. As we grow, our brains need to update the body map with new sizes for your limbs. However, during periods of intense growth, the body map can't keep up with the rate of growth, and so your brain is always using an out-of-date body map. This means that movements sometimes do not produce the desired effect, as the brain thinks that certain movements and limb angles are needed, when in fact different angles and movements are needed to account for the new body size. Okay, that's it for this video. If you made it this far, consider liking and subscribing. It'll take you literally five seconds of your time and will earn my eternal gratitude. So until next time, thank you very much for watching.